I'm Dr. Brian Francis. I'm from the Doheny Eye Institute, uh, UCLA School of Medicine here in Los Angeles. And today I want to give you some of the uh, first impressions of a new type of uh, surgery and device called the goniotome. And the goniotome is used to do a trabeculotomy by internal approach. In other words, through a clear corneal incision, the instrument is able to remove a strip of the trabecular meshwork and inner wall of Schlem's canal. Uh, by doing that, it therefore increases the aqueous outflow through the trabecular outflow pathway. So the goniotome is a device with uh, a double-edged blade uh, with serrations and a sh uh, sharp tip. The tip is designed to advance across the anterior chamber, insert through trabecular meshwork into the Schlem's canal. And then as you advance the device across the trabecular meshwork and Schlem's canal, and it lifts the trabecular meshwork, puts it on tension, and then cuts the two ends of the trabecular meshwork, thereby removing a strip of the tissue. The goniotome can be performed with irrigation aspiration uh, on the device. The irrigation aspiration can be attached to uh, a phaco emulsification machine. Uh, it can also be attached to the existing uh, Neomedics trabectome uh, instrumentation, or it can be actually used with a manual irrigation aspiration. What the irrigation aspiration does is it removes the blood uh, reflux from the canal as the device is moving along in Schlem's canal. So that gives you a better view during the uh, entire procedure. Uh, <clears throat> once the strip has been removed, if any strip is remaining, the vacuum can be increased on the IA and it can actually uh, grab the uh, strip of trabecular meshwork and allow you to pull it and detach it so you don't have to put viscoelastic in and reach in with a forcep uh, to remove that strip of trabecular meshwork. So it's very handy uh, in that regard as well. When talking to the patient about the surgery, I tell them that it has very low risk compared to traditional filtering surgery. Patients are very comfortable during the procedure. We give them light sedation just as you would with a cataract surgery. Uh, so the anesthesia and comfort level is very similar to cataract surgery by itself. I do find that with angle-based procedures, I like to keep the patients on their glaucoma medications post-operatively until at least the first post-operative day or first post-operative week, preferably. And then I start to taper their medications as long as their pressure is controlled. Uh, I use antibiotic standard uh, four times a day for a week. I also use a steroid after surgery. I prefer the use of uh, a weaker steroid that is not as likely to cause a steroid uh, IOP spike. So my steroid of choice is actually Lodopredinol or Lodomax. Um, FML or fluoromethylone can be substituted as well. Um, and when combined with the cataract surgery, I like to use a topical NSAID, such as Ketorolac uh, or your, your NSAID of choice uh, to prevent inflammation. I don't find it necessary to use pilocarpine postoperatively. I don't believe that it increases uh, the ability of the cleft to stay open. So I find that after the procedure, the patients are generally very comfortable. Uh, if any pain medication is needed, it's usually simply Tylenol. Um, and they're very comfortable the day after surgery and, you know, during the post-op recovery period. Um, I found the procedure to be relatively easy. It's a, kind of a standard gonioscopic surgery, an angle-based surgery. Uh, I found the addition of the irrigation aspiration to be uh, an excellent addition to the procedure. and uh, it combines very well with fake emulsification or can be used as a standalone procedure.